you look for trouble, you're gonna see that you, your words are dangerous, your talk is cheap. Gentlemen, welcome to ECCW. We are live from Birmingham, England. I'm DC and I'm being joined by Garrett. Hey, you know, it's great to be back after my two-month hiatus. Frank asked me back to lead ECCW to be the voice, and here comes Batista. And I'm not sure if you know this here, but Batista lost his title to William Regal at Night of Champions Extreme Rules. Well, you know, yes, that's right. I was going to go off on that right away. I mean, I left believing I had a smile on my face knowing that Wade Barrett, when I came back, was going to be our ECCW champion. Well, for the first time in my life, I was wrong, and Batista was robbed out of his title by William Regal. And of course, on the four-year anniversary show, Batista invoked his rematch clause, and he will be challenging William Regal at one night stand for the EC. CW title. I don't see why Wade Barrett isn't involved in this whatsoever, but Batista hopefully can regain the title that he so much deserved, seeing as how he is the biggest name on ECCW today. He's not some over-the-hill English man. Well, then again, William Regal has spent years perfecting his craft, so it'll be very hard to take that title off. And remember, William Regal took Shawn Michaels to his limit in that champion versus champion match on SmackDown. Well, you gotta also understand that, you know, between William Regal and Shawn Michaels, there's about a, uh, two, three million years of experience, somewhere around that. And you gotta remember that Regal lost. Well, then again, Shawn Michaels is the world heavyweight champion, so there's no harm losing there. Speak of the ECCW champion. Of course, William Regal here in England, his home, where Batista must be treated like an outcast because William Regal is is um, I use the term champion loosely, but these people are just hating on Batista even though he's obviously the more talented of the two. Well, it wasn't on SmackDown, it was on the four-year anniversary show, I'm sorry about that, so... But anyway, let's see what Regal has to say. And listen to this, the crowd is completely behind William Regal here tonight. Of course, we're in jolly old England. Nobody's going to be behind the talent that is Batista because we're not in the United States of America. Wait, if Batista's so talented, how did Regal pin him clean in the middle of the ring at what at Night of Champions Extreme Rules? Well, obviously... Whoa! Wait a minute! Oh These wait, Spear! At it. These two are at loggerheads. These guys are going at it. And we got security out here. The, this is an intense, a uh, heated situation we got here in the middle of our ring. Of course, and security can barely hold these guys back. And look at this. These two are going at it again. There's a huge spear by William Regal. They're just going at it, but Batista has the dominant position. Look at this. Batista taking William Regal up. And it's a striking match between these two, but Regal is getting the advantage over Batista. And Regal is showing why he is the ECCW champion, but just as I say that, Batista comes back. Well, Batista is the powerhouse. Batista, the younger of these two men. Oh, look at this. Regal 
using those Dude. dirty tactics that made him famous in their speech tonight, Ben. Wow. It's anarchy in the UK tonight. Batista making his way out of the ring, catching his breath. Look at this. He has a. I'm. He just threw the title to William Regal. Batista not having any of it. Wait a minute, here comes Jim Ross, and I wonder what he's doing out here. Yes, our interim general manager, good old JR, as some would like to call him, running the show for our actual boss, Michael Cole. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. He's not the general manager, but... Man, what a bombshell by JR. Oh, wow. Jim Ross is our new general manager. This will change things definitely. Shit. Well, sit. Now, you know, this is ridiculous. Michael Cole was doing an absolutely admirable job. He's one of the best GMs I've ever seen here in WEDF. And now we're going to have this three-ring circus running around with Jim Ross. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Jim Ross has, has been a part of countless promotions over the years. He definitely knows what he's doing when, when it comes to running a league. You can say what you want about Michael Cole, but he is... He is an excellent, excellent general manager, better than Jim Ross could ever do. I am not convinced in any capacity. And here comes a voice of reason in Wade Barrett. Of course, and he cannot be happy about how he lost the UCW title match at Night of Champions Extreme Rules. Well, he was the odds on favorite. I was so certain that we were going to see Wade Barrett become the next ECCW champion. You know, Barrett has a valid point. Of course, but the, the thing is... You know, we're under a new regime. Bear can't just expect to get whatever he wants right away. Wait a second. Is... Oh, oh, man. Is Wade Barrett expected to actually face that freak show? Well, that's why he said about earning his way up. He's If he beats the Boogeyman, that'll definitely put a notch into his belt and give him actually a pretty good argument for why he should be in a title picture. But anyway, here he comes. Now this is the exact kind of crap I'm talking about when I talk about Jim Ross. 
being our interim channel manager. Wade Barrett deserves a lot better than the Boogeyman, the guy that's associating himself with the likes of Vito and Keith Slater. Of course, this man has been very dominant as of late. But this man is, this man is a freak. Look at this guy. But I have to say this, Wade Barrett will have a very tough test on his plate here tonight if he wants to beat the Boogeyman. Well, all I have to say is that Barrett deserves much better of an opponent than the Boogeyman. Barrett's gonna absolutely dominate this guy. Well, that'll be easier said than done. Because, after all, this man has been terrorizing Keith Slater as of late. And of course, Boogeyman could terrorize Barrett like he did with Keith Slater, you never know. I swear, if Barrett eats worms tonight, I, I have absolutely no idea what to think. And look at this, these two are locking up, and the bo the boogeyman gets the advantage. Barrett. And these two are trading holes, and look at that, boogeyman's working on the arm, you don't have to see that from him, but Barrett's immediately getting out of dodge, looks like he might be a bit afraid of the boogeyman, but just as I say that, he gets back in control. Well, you know, something that I'd like to touch on while Barrett takes to the Boogeyman is Jim Ross thinks that he can tell the European champion Alex Riley what to do. He wants a European title shakeup. We got Alex Riley versus Evan O'Shea tonight, as well as Justin Gabriel versus Michael McGillicuddy. Well, that's just the kind of GM that Jim Ross is. He can shake up title pictures just like that, and just as I say that, Boogeyman just slamming Barrett's head right into the mat. The man taking it to Barrett, but you can't count Barrett out. He is ever resilient. Touch more on the European Championship. Alex Riley, it doesn't matter who he faces, he is going to beat them. He has proven he is the most dominant European champion ever. But the thing is, it's a good shakeup. JR wants to make things interesting. This Wade Barrett, oh. huge pump handle slam. That was a great move there. Showed a lot of strength from Wade Barrett. Boogeyman's at least 260 to 280, but there's a huge kick right to the gut. And look at this. No, oh. Boogeyman counters with a drop toe hold. Now Boogeyman hits a huge elbow to the back of the head, and Boogeyman just. Down and Wade Barrett. Oh, man, oh, what a stiff clothesline there by the Boogeyman. Well, I mean, Wade Barrett is obviously shaken up from his recent loss. Boogeyman to the pin now. And Wade Barrett had the fortitude to kick out, and now Boogeyman and Barrett are going at it. And Boogeyman has been reversing almost everything that Wade Barrett throws at him. This is showing a surprising amount of technical prowess from the Boogeyman. Well, Wade Barrett, you gotta remember, he went through a triple threat cage match and, you know, a beat the clock tournament, a cage match before that. He is worn out and he's obviously in no shape to compete tonight as the Boogeyman hits that huge splash. And the Boogeyman, the Boogeyman style is very aggressive. He likes to just dominate his opponents, but will this be the end as Boogeyman goes for the cover, but no, only a two count. Look at Sarge up into the ropes. Oh, look at that. That was a club right to the back of the neck. Look at this. Wade Barrett with big snake eyes. Of course, but you say that 
he was terrorizing Heath Slater, and that's a Winds of fair change. Problem, but why would anyone help out Heath Slater? Well, I don't know, maybe the Boogeyman finally chose to take pity on Heath Slater, as Heath Slater is now being terrorized by Jinder Mahal as of late, if I'm not mistaken. Look at this. Boogeyman working into the corner. And look at this, Boogeyman staying up for something. But no, Wade Bear reverses it into a reverse SDO. That was very impressive, but now it looks like Wade Bear is staying up for something. Could be a powerbomb. Oh, huge sit-out powerbomb from Wade Barrett. Barrett showing his injury, showing that he's worn down from previous nights wrestling. Obviously not at the hands of the Boogeyman as he worn out. But Barrett, Irish Whip. Rob Wade Barrett should, should be disqualified for that. That's a low blow indeed, but look at this. Boogeyman, classic technical wrestling, a suplex. And now with a lariat. And Boogeyman's hitting those huge lariats and strikes that have made him famous, but... Look at that! Wait! Boogeyman with a huge DDT! What a maneuver there! Boogeyman gaining momentum, but Oh! I don't know what they call it, but Boogeyman may be staying up for the end. Well, that reverse spinning STO, could he be looking for the Boogie Slam here no right now? It, is that, that's General Mahal's music. Oh, man, but... Oh, oh he turned back his body back drop. to Barrett, but Barrett has recovered. And there's oh. a huge throw. A huge Claudio Cagstinoli like Flapjack. Oh! Big boot. This is the end. Here we go. Oh, wasteland. There's a cover. One, two, three. And what a performance by Wade Barrett. The ever dominating performance by Wade Barrett showing him that he will take on all comers despite that he was just recently in a steel cage match. Boogeyman, make your way to the back. You're not ready to play the big league. Of course, but he wants to have one without Jinder Mahal playing mind games with Boogeyman. Just what Boogeyman used to do with Heath later, having his music play during the middle of his match. So, you know, it was Boogeyman's fault. We're getting distracted. Just music. There's music all around all the time. Wade Barrett was smart enough to capitalize that huge wasteland. Of course that wasteland just slammed head back right into the mat. Not the mouth of the hole, but that was it. Well, Barrett looks to get back in the ECCW title hunt, which he deserves to be. Wait, but look at that! That's Mahal and Heath Slater! What are they doing? Come on! This is just uncalled for! This... Mahal and Slater are just attacking an injured man. What? Well, wait, look at that! Vito! What about Vito? What a freak show we got going on here tonight! This cross-dresser and the boogeyman are trying to stand up to to Heath Slater and Jinder Mahal, a man who eats worms and a cross-dresser. Wait, Batista! Batista is just attacking William Regal for no reason, but look at this, these two are going back and forth, but Batista's getting the upper hand and- Oh my god! Oh! Oh man! A stiff shot, William Regal could have a, a concussion. Batista sending a message. Ryan and Ryan will be taking on the Wu Tang Man. You know, 
This has been building for a long time. These two have faced each other in the past. These two, since they both started on ECC, we have had a lot of personal animosity. Mason Ryan looking to make a name for himself. But that'll be easier said than done as he'll be taking on this man, the Wu Tang. You know, for many weeks, Mason Ryan has attacked the Wu Tang Man. He's getting that psychological advantage over on Wu Tang Man. And I have to say this Wu Tang Man can't be looking too far ahead to his last minute match with Michael Cole. Or else he might regret it. You know, something I just want to touch on our interim general manager has to obviously stack the deck against the Wu-Tang Man. No member of the Spotlight can even be close to this match. If any of them interferes, they will be fired. Of course, this makes it a one-on-one -on -one match, and this match will be personal and pass down the beat all around this right now. Wu-Tang Man, way to the ring. Wu-Tang Man, the odds on favor, but you gotta, you gotta think of the raw power of Mason Bryant. I mean, the guy is a great trick in the ring. Of course, this match is about wrestling music, considering how Michael Cole abused his power by sending his blasts against the Wu-Tang Clan. But anyway, this match is about to get underway. These two have had a lot of history, but it's about to come to an end here tonight, and what a match this will be. You know, hopefully, Mason Ryan is able to wear down the Wu-Tang Man enough so that it's an actual fair fight between Michael Cole and the Wu-Tang Man. There we go. Look at this, both these men are just running to the center of the ring, and both of them are just trading shots. Mason Ryan was absolutely seething before the match started, and now these two are absolutely getting into it, this striking war. Of course, both these men are known to be brawlers, and we're about to see who's the better brawler here, here tonight. And now Wu-Tang Man is taking the advantage laying into Mason Ryan with those huge shots and there's a huge back oh. five shot by Mason Ryan. Mason, huge <laughs> German suplex. That German suplex just dropped Wu-Tang Man on his neck and that can't be good for the chances in this match. Mason is absolutely clubbing the Wu-Tang Man. There's no sign of defense at all. He is just full force punching this dude all over. Of course, and look at this, Wu-Tang Man reverses, and now he's just laying into Mason Ryan in his own right. I mean, these two are absolute brawlers, strikers, but we gotta find out who is going to come out on top. We, I mean, we could see a knockout. Some of these strikes are so powerful. Of course, and oh man, there was a huge knee right to the head of Mason Ryan. Wu Tang Man going to the corner. Try to go for that lariat. And as you can see, these two have been laying into each other back and forth. This match has just been awesome so far, and Mason Ryan. Ryan's going for something, but no, Wu-Tang Man counters oh. the backbreaker. You know, Mason Ryan really needs to prove himself for Michael Cole, his fallen ally, for the spotlight. He needs he needs this victory over the Wu-Tang Man, but look at this. Oh, going for a spine buster, but no, Mason Ryan with that huge DDT. And that DT may have just put the tide in Mason Ryan's favor. And here we go. 
huge load. Oh. Nearly take Blue Tangman inside out. There's the cover. One, two, no. Going back and forth. Wait a minute. What's he doing? Oh man, he was quite a very blackjack right there. And now Mason Ryan's just laying into Wu Tang Man with those knees. But look at this. Wu Tang Man's starting to come back, but just as he does, Mason Ryan takes him out with that big boot. And the odds are not looking good for Wu Tang Man, but oh man, there's the, the last call. Of course, but Mason Ryan spending too much time on him. Don't tell me. Oh man, there's a huge power bomb, and that huge. I mean, the strength to lift somebody like the Wu Tang Man. Mason Ryan and the Wu-Tang Man hanging it outside. These men have a 10 count outside of the ring, but when it comes down to Michael Cole and Wu-Tang Man, all it takes is one 10 count, and that's it. They are knocked out. Of course, and these two are on the outside. This will not bode well to one or both of them. I think the outside game favors Mason Ryan far more. Mason Ryan is the far bigger man, and but Wu Tang Man trying to make his way back into the ring. I think he busted Mason Ryan open. Yeah, I think he is. I think Mason Ryan is seeing his own blood right now, and that might either fire and that might fire him up right now. Either we're gonna see Mason Ryan kick it into that next gear. Wait, go for the stunner for Mason Ryan. Look at this big Oklahoma slam. Shades of the junkyard dog. And as you can see, Mason Ryan is constantly checking on his head. Wait a minute. Wu Tang Man with those huge shots, but Mason Ryan immediately gets out of it, but here he goes, he'll try it again. Oh, Mason Ryan, smart enough to counter. But Wu Tang Man, no! Wu Tang Man cannot build momentum over Mason Ryan here. Here he goes, he'll try it again, but no! These are just praying shots back and forth. No one's willing to give an inch. I mean, these two are leaving it all in the ring here tonight. We have Mason Ryan going for that last call. And now, another big backbreaker. And look at this. Wu Tang Man saying up for something. Huge pile driver. That does not help the injured head of Mason Ryan. And there's the cover. That's gotta be it. One, two, no. Oh. And as you can see, Mason Ryan is in control at this moment. Wu Tang Man needs to find a way to get back in this. Oh, there's a huge big boot by Mason Ryan. Oh, man. Oh. Wu Tang Man taking him over the top, but Mason Ryan. We're gonna see Mason Ryan go on the top rope. Oh man, we don't often see that, but when we do, it's effective. And look at this. Mason Ryan's working on the neck of Wu Tang Man. And look at the neck. Oh, huge. This could be it. And look at this, arms ripping over the top rope. Mason Ryan completely in control at this moment. But remember what happened the last time these two went to the outside. Wu Tang Man got the advantage, and that's what's happening here at night. Oh! Wu Tang Man, I mean, no matter what, whoever wins this match, you gotta know Wu Tang Man is going into that last man standing match a hurt man. Of course, which is, which I think was Mason Ryan's job by the spotlight here tonight to wear down Wu Tang Man to make sure that he can't make it to the last man standing match. 
effort Michael Cole has given Mason his orders. But I think Mason is just having a lot of fun with this one. Taking it to Wu-Tang Man. Taking it back into the ring. I think he's getting ready to finish this one. Of course, it looks like Mason and Ryan think this match is close to being over. Here we go. Knees to the gut by Wu-Tang Man. Wu-Tang Man is just trying to make a desperate attempt to get back in this match. And oh! He might do that slam. Good slam. One, two, no. Now Wu Tang Man's going back up to the top rope. Oh man, this can't be good. No, no, don't, don't do this, Mason. No. It's, oh, oh, that is a lot of weight. Both of those men, somewhere close to 300 pounds. And look at them, they're both standing. They're both. Oh, Spine Buster! Spine Buster out of nowhere. It looks like he could be setting up for the Wu Tang Starter. Here it comes! Wu Tang Star! Oh. That could be it! It! Mason Ryan got flipped inside out with that one. And there's the cover. One, two, three. And what a mess that was. I personally believe that Wu Tang Man is ready for Michael Cole to come. Come one night stand. You know, Michael Cole better have the spotlight in check, ready, because it is not a fair fight between Michael Cole and the Blue Tang Man. Of course, but I believe that the spotlight is still banned from the that if I recall correctly. What a match we just saw, but that's only the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, the RMA event, we will see Evan O'Shea take on Alex Riley in a rematch from Barely Legal. But look at this, Michael Cole. Yeah, my, Michael Cole, probably not smart on his part. Wu-Tang Man. All it took was a few steps towards Cole, and Cole is booking it. Oh, but look David at this, Otonka. there's a spotlight! David Otonka, the man himself, spotlight. working over the legs. Looks like he's trying to injure his leg, but... Oh, just... oh too oh, funky. Too funky, just... And look at this, the spotlight's booking it. I mean... Incredible. Display of effort coming to the aid of the Wu Tang Man is too funky. Actually, that's funky cool, but funky cool. That was just a huge challenge that was laid down by Funk by Funky Cool. These these two will clash with the spotlight. Come one night stand two, and what a match it's going to be. Well, you know, I'm in favor of the spotlight.
So Kennedy on his way to the ring. You know, I've got to work in favor of Husky Harris. Husky Harris is rookie up too, but by far, he is one of the brightest talents we have today in WEDS. He just needs that push. Husky Harris is almost twice as Kennedy size. If I'm not mistaken, Husky Harris is a third generation superstar, at least not second generation. But then again, remember that Kennedy is almost the BCW champion and a world heavyweight champion. I mean, you know, Husky Harris isn't too happy about this, but you gotta think. If he has a strong showing at the very least against Kennedy, that'll bump him up a lot in the rankings. I see a future European and especially ECCW champion here in Husky Harris. This is we're locking up, and that can't be smart on the part of Mr. Kennedy. Husky Harris is just dragging him over the ropes. Oh, wow, that's a surprise amount of strength from Mr. Kennedy, able to arm drag. Oh, wow. Husky Harris coming in at about 300 pounds and change. I mean, Mr. Kennedy being able to lift the guy shows his pure athleticism. You also got to think Husky Harris can just manhandle Mr. Kennedy. Oh, oh look at that! Wow. Of course, Husky Harris li likes to call himself likes to call himself the tank with the Ferrari engine. And that shows that the man's just extremely athletic for a guy of his size. Well, you know, Husky Harris, I mean, the guy utilizes the running Senton as his finisher, and I mean, along with his weight, he's got the speed to be able to do it. He is an agile dude, I can tell you that much. Look at the power. Look at the, he's got Mr. Kennedy at a 90 degree angle to the mat. Of course. Harris is taking people like Smokey and King to his limit. Oh wow, what a splash. You can't even kick out of this. Look at this. He's sort of going back and forth. Husky Harris working over Kennedy in the corner. Oh! See? And look at this, Harris is working over Mr. Candy, but there's the veteran instinct, able to take Harris over. On the outside now, Kennedy, is he hoping to suplex? Oh, on the outside. And there's a huge elbow on the part of Mr. Kennedy, and Husky Harris is in trouble. And there are some huge lariats. And now he's following up with an airship, but Husky Harris reverses it, and there's a huge back body drop. Husky Harris is really taking it to Mr. Kennedy. He has everything to prove here tonight, and he wants to make a name for himself. Of course, and oh wow! And there's the cover. One, two. No, and Kenny kicked out. Dropped to a hole by Mr. Kennedy, but this isn't smart. He's taunting. I guess a guy like Harris can't do that, but Kennedy manages to see whatever Harris had coming. coming. Yes. Mr. Kennedy going for the Kenton bomb. They, nope. Oh, dude, D-Bot Husky Harris. Of course, and there's a huge 
last, but he doesn't go oh, for the pin. Another one for more. Huge missile dropkick by Mr. By Kennedy, and that's what Kennedy has to do, but wait a minute, looks like he's setting up for the mic check. Kennedy going for a mic check, but no, Husky Harris has it scouted. Husky Harris gets whipped by Kennedy. Kennedy an arm drag. Oh, Husky Harris almost going for that swing or reverse SDL, but no, the mic check. And that could be all she wrote. There's the cover. Despite. One, two, three. Here is well as a valiant effort, but of course, Mr. Kennedy is a former world heavyweight and BCCW champion, so he proves why he is all that. But anyway, I see big things in Husky Harris in the future. Oh wait a minute, look at that Wade Barrett attacking Mr. Kennedy. What's this about? Why is this happening? I don't even know. I just don't even, but... Barrett made a statement, I guess, but at what cost? Well, you know, Barrett had to prove himself... Uh, he was getting lost in this championship shuffle. He didn't want to be left behind. And I mean, Kennedy is one of those guys who is big up in this World Heavyweight Championship uh, dealio. Justin Gabriel, one of the hottest names right now in our mid-card, working for that European Championship. But, you know, I don't think he has any kind of a right to be a part of this shakeup, seeing as how he's lost not once, but twice to Alex Riley, uh, once in a chairs match at Night of Champions Extreme Rules. But the thing is, a fresh start could be good for anyone, but... Here comes Michael McGillicuddy, one of the best young names here on ECCW. I see a lot of great things in this guy's future. So. We know Husky Harris and Michael McGillicuddy, two of the faces of the future, in my opinion. And you know, if anybody should come out on top here tonight, it should be Michael McGillicuddy. He, he could be a face of ECCW. Let's talk about the match at one night stand. Funky pool or, or the spotlight could end. You know, that's very true. Um, funky cool seems not work nearly as well as the team as the spotlight. The spotlight has so much backing behind it, such as our esteemed former general manager Michael Cole and uh, John Bradshaw Layfield, a wrestling god. Here we go. Lots of between these two men. Look at this is sort of going back and forth. These men have lots of technical prowess, which is showing here tonight. 
Well, I'd like to correct you, Garrett. JBL is not in the spotlight. Well, whatever kind of association these gentlemen in the spotlight have with Mr. Layfield, it will certainly pay dividends, especially seeing as how members of the spotlight uh, were part of that bounty against Samoa Joe. Of course, there's definitely an alliance still there, but let's focus on, on this match. As Michael McGillicuddy hits a huge back body drop on Dustin Gabe. You know, Michael McGillicuddy, uh, a second generation superstar, if not third, the son of Mr. Perfect, he's got that, uh, he's got it in his blood, in his genetics, that he is going to be greatness. Which I think that he obviously can be, but it'll take a lot of dedication on his part, but Justin Gabriel's been working his way up for months, and there's a huge Russian leg sweep by Justin Gabriel. A very impressive form by Gabriel. Gabriel going for that seamless that athletic he just how he's able to jump from the floor to that third rope is just incredible but aside from that it's a it's a battle between high flying and the technical brawling style of um michael McGillicuddy. but this could be it there's the cover one two no and as you can see michael McGillicuddy's in control there's a huge back oh. suplex you notice Justin Gabriel landed right on the back of his head. That could cause a concussion, but Justin Gabriel's doing what he does best with that technical slash high flying style. And as you can see, both these men are going back and forth. And just Gabriel just using is just using those kicks to his advantage. And there's a huge cross body. Wait a minute, look at this. Springboard cross body. Oh by Justin Gabriel. You know, Justin Gabriel showing that he can just uh, string his moves together so seamlessly. Now with a pin. Michael McGillicuddy with a very in your face Justin Gabriel went for that drop kick and Michael McGillicuddy just shrugged it off and took a step the other way and then he shows that he can be just as athletic McGillicuddy with that camel clutch that looks just Gabriel's trying to fall his way to the ropes will he be able to make it and he does Look at this now, McGill plays in this rutting and working on the legs. Like, belly to belly. I mean, Michael McGillicuddy is a wrestler's wrestler. He's been taught by some of the best, and now he's going right into that cover. And look at this. McGill McGillicuddy sends Gabriel over the top rope, and this cannot be good for Justin Gabriel. Oh man! Miguel Kai just sends Gabriel headfirst into the announce table. And as you can see, both men are trying to get that advantage over the other, and this match has been oh. almost all Michael Miguel Cuddy. The athletic running dropkick from Michael Miguel Cuddy. He just sent Gabriel. He just put all of his force to send him across the ring. Michael Miguel Cuddy is one of the most shining members of the spotlight if I'm not mistaken he's still a member I mean this guy has big things in his future as long as he's able to knock out somebody like Justin Gabriel a former number one contender for the European title and as we see both from going back and forth no one's willing to give an inch and there's a huge oh. kick by Justin Gabriel one of the more impressive moves of Gabriel's arsenal. And now look at this with that Hurricane Ron roll up. Oh, Gillicuddy scouted it, able to kick out. Look at this, both of just train kicks to the legs. Yes, look at that. Cutter. 
what a move by Justin Gabriel, and this could be the beginning of the end. Looks like he's staying up to that 450. Yeah, that looks to be the case. Here he goes. Oh, Michael McGillicuddy countered it. Look at face buster. And now the McGilla cutter. Oh, and that's it. There's the cover. One. Excellent showing two. from Justin Gabriel, but Michael McGillicuddy walks away with the win in this one. I think this is his biggest win thus far. And I'm surprised that Justin Gabriel was able to have more of a prospect. This was a hard for Sam Michael Exactly, a ride. I mean, he has some stiff competition coming up because Michael McGillicuddy isn't here to play. Yeah, Michael McGillicuddy is here to do something great, I think. That's what's going to happen. But anyways, that's not all of our double main event. We still have FNOC taking on Alex Riley on the main event. Gilkuddy is extremely proud of himself in the ring, and he should be, because he's one step closer to realizing his first major championship in WEDF. Evan O'Shea on his way to the ring. And of course, Evan O'Shea is one of the most impressive superstars here on ECCW, in my opinion. And in my opinion, he's very close to capturing the European championship and maybe even the big one somewhere in the future. I think he's that good. Well, you know, this is the thing. Evan O'Shea showed up here back in WDF and immediately was given his European Championship shot. He maybe had one win total before he was awarded his championship opportunity. And, you know, I think he's got a long way to go. It doesn't matter what he did anywhere else. It matters what he does here. And I don't see him becoming a European Champion anytime soon with such, a, with such an impressive champion as Alex Ryder. Right, he beat here. He beat a former world heavyweight and ECCW champion in Mr. Kennedy. You know, you also got to think that Husky Harris earlier tonight had an impressive showing over Mr. Kennedy. So, take it with a grain of salt. You have to think with champion like A-Rye, the varsity villain, who won his chairs match at Night of Champions for three moves. He is here to hold this title. He's the first European champion, and he's going to hold it as long as he possibly can. Of course, if he has a good leg, he'll be the last European champion. But he'll have a very tough test as he'll be taking on Evan O'Shea here tonight. Evan O'Shea, well known for his time in other federations, both these men doing laps around the ring in a matter of sorts. But you know, Alex Riley, he's coming in with the gold. He's got that, he's a champion. He's got that well-deserved ego. And I think he's gonna go into this with a lot more pride and a better showing because of his ego. But then again, uh, his FNLJ's match at Barely Legal was a learning experience for him, and I believe he knows now how to beat Alex Riley. Well, he most definitely uh, took some lessons away from that, but I don't think Alex Riley versus O'Shea is happening anytime soon. I personally believe 
McGillicuddy versus Riley is in the is in the stars, and MJ is just gonna have to take a back seat because there's better talent out there right now for that European Championship. And what a match we're seeing right now! And oh man, what a kick by OJ! You gotta know that both these men are gonna leave it in the ring. They're gonna take it to their absolute limit here tonight. Of course, there's a huge kick by Evan O'Shea. O'Shea is known for his striking slash high-flying style, which makes him a very big name in CAW. You know, you gotta think, Riley is power. This guy is, not only is he Harvard educated, or should I say varsity educated, the guy is built like a colossus. And you know, he's a brawler as much as his moveset is impressive. The guy's got spine buster, spear, you're dismissed. The guy is all power. has that tactical slash high-flying style which makes him a perfect match for out for out Riley. This guy should be that OJ has the fifth out of the face though. The two offset and complement each other so much. They they just have good match chemistry after that stiff elbow from Alex Riley. I mean you gotta think stuff uh Evan O'Shea has a submission background. Alex Riley is none too well of a submissionist. I don't know if he has any kind of submission defense against something like the Stripes 2. I don't know either, but Alex Riley also has that brawling style, which O'Shea also has. So these two are very, know each other very well. well these men will bleed just to see the other bleed and to see them beat the other opponent these these men I mean in this European Championship shakeup you gotta see I mean with incredible maneuvers like that whoa I have to say OJ has been one of the more impressive superstars here on ECCW uh, over the past few months and O'Shea getting a rope break not scouting his uh, ring well enough but he's working over with those high flying maneuvers on Alex Riley and look at that he was hitting those kicks to the legs which sets up perfectly for, for the stripes too with Alex Riley with that suplex neck breaker working over the back and now look at this camel clutch but a rope break Oh, stiff, stiff lariat from Alex Riley. Of course, looks like he's been taking lessons from JBL or Stan Hansen, maybe, but OJ has wrestled all over the world, and here we go, look at some more kicks to the legs, but Riley carries that one, hits another stiff lariat. Well, O'Shea is as versed as anybody. He's been all over America, Japan, Mexico, Australia. I mean, name a country and O'Shea more than likely has wrestled in it. Oh! Big spine buster from Alex Riley showing off that power. Now just shoving O'Shea's face down for that pin. Whoa! Oh, my incredible! God. Huge soon star press from Evan O'Shea. Evan put it all on the line, and this time they most certainly paid off. Oh, wow. Here we go. He's calling for it. Missile drop Ooh. kick. I am no say to Alex Riley, and there's a cover. One, two, no. 
You could absolutely feel the impact. Of course, and look at this. Oh, Jay's working the legs once again, but look at this. Look at he's setting up for the Jay Slayer, but Riley oh. countered. Riley. The big backbreaker working over the back of O'Shea even more, and now trying to wear him down with a pin. Well, I don't think that was to wear him down. I think he honestly thought he would get the pin off that, but O'Shea's been constantly working on the lights, and looks like he's setting up for the stripes too there, but. Riley managed to counter it. Oh, working over Shay's legs. Oh! Back suplex. Into a pin. There's the cover. One, two, no. Oh wow, look at the strength of Evan O'Shea. Evan O'Shea isn't playing around with Alex Riley anymore. Here we go. Oh wow. Oh! Shades of Daniel Bryan. Wait a minute. Here we go. There's that black. Oh. That has got to be it. Two. No. Wait a minute. Sunset flip. There's oh. the cover. It's a roll up on Alex Riley. Two. What a match we've seen here tonight, and oh my god! One, two, no. no. Here we go. O'Shea's working over the mid and look at that, he was just rapid firing kick there. Alex Riley couldn't even defend against any of that. Now it ends with Gurry knocking Alex over the ropes and out to the floor. Whoa! What's well, going to start? The rest there and now Shay's throwing Riley back in the ring. There's an elbow. And there's a follow up with a huge leg drop. Here we go. Demon's Fang by Evan O'Shea. O'Shea is absolutely taking Riley to his limit tonight. And look at this. Could it be? Shea Slayer. One, two, three. Our European right. champion has lost in a huge upset to Alex Riley. Or should I say to Evan O'Shea? Well, the thing is, these two options are so well, but I hope that we'll be able to see a, a rubber stuff back too. But anyway, this was the beginning of the end. That demon thing. Oh! Hard hitting, as always, is O'Shea. The better striker of the two. I mean, last time he's too flash. Riley got the upper hand, and now O'Shea proving that he's ready for another chance. And this could lead to O'Shea being the number one contender for the European Championship. Come one night stand too. I've never seen a better reason uh, that to be given the number one contendership than to beat the champion himself. I mean, that just, that says it all. Wait a minute, here comes our interim general manager. 
good old J.R. Jamrod. What a huge announcement from Jim Ross, our interim general manager. I can't wait to find out who our number one contender will be next week. See ya. Also, buds.